Hi, I'm Craig Rice, Montgomery County Council President. I'd like to invite you to join me for a conversation with Prince George's County Council Chair, Mel Franklin. That's coming up next right here on County Cable Montgomery. This Snow Boundaries travels to the historic National Park Seminary in Forest Glen. Montgomery County Council President Craig Rice and Chair of the Prince George's County Council Mel Franklin strolled through the grounds before entering the beautifully renovated Seminary Ballroom. After getting situated, the conversation began with some personal connections. You know, we certainly go back a ways, right? Uh, right. all the way back to Young Dems <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> for the state. You and Prince George's and me in Montgomery County. And so, uh, you know, t tell me a little bit about what got you into Young Dems and really got you started with that. Because I don't know how it started. I know how we met, but right. I don't know what led you to that. Well, you know, when I first moved to the county, right out to Prince George's, right after law school, right. Um, you know, I, I said, you know, what, what really do I want to do with my life? You know, I, I was, it was an attorney and whatnot, but I really wanted to sort of dedicate myself to something that I thought God really intended me to, to really focus uh, the, the gifts he'd given me. Sure. And public service really fit with, with what I thought I, sh I could be best at in terms of you know, improving things for, for folks. Um, you know, you can do a lot of things with your life. You can kind of dedicate your life to, to sure. making a lot of money or, right. or, or, or public service. And, right. and, and I'm not uh, knocking going out and making a lot of money. I'm <laughs> envious of that, in fact. <laughs> But public service really is my calling, yeah. uh, to be honest with you. And so uh, I really felt politics was the best way I could do public service and, and improve the lives of the folks around me and, and leave this world better than I found it, Absolutely. you know, which, which is really, really the mission. And so when I moved to Prince George's and I, and I you know, Prince George's is, is, is a special place in terms of its diversity and, and its history. But, you know, I, I met some great folks, mm -hmm. uh, other, other young guys and, and ladies who were trying to do the same thing, right. uh, both in Prince George's and Montgomery. It's yep. been how I met you. We had mutual friends, jo yeah. you know, John, uh, John Mag, Mag <laughs> some other guys and, and ladies. And, um, you know, we were all trying to figure everything out. That's I mean, right. uh, you were a little ahead of me in terms of, uh, nah, in terms know of uh, uh, your, you know, uh, where you're going. But but we all were really trying to figure out what to do to impact uh, the, the lives of the folks around us. Yeah. So Young Democrats is a great, great vehicle to do that. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, whether you're Democrat or Republican, those kind of organizations really are, do a service for everybody in terms of exposing That's the next crop of leaders. Because I mean, there, there isn't like one handbook for politics, yeah. and, or you yeah. know how to get involved, how to be, uh, how to do a great job. So right. you really got to learn from folks who are doing it, and then you know you got to learn about uh, how do you use kind of your youth uh, as kind of a catalyst to get other young people interested. And so. That was kind of how it started. And from there, you, you know, um, as you know, uh, you, you have to really come to understand how government works. That's it. Which is nowhere near the way you thought, probably thought it worked yeah. <laughs> you know, before yeah. you got in government. Yeah. Um, and local government especially. You know, the buck stops with us. That's it. Uh, everybody else can kind of pass it off from the federal to the state. That's uh, so But true. the buck stops at, at the local government. There's nobody else for us to, to, to say, oh, it's their problem. Yeah. We have to be the problem solvers, yeah. and that's what I like about local government. We, you know, uh, that's our job. That's uh, it. Challenging, but it's it's rewarding because we're the closest folks to the people. You, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, I was reading uh, your bio that mm -hmm. they had sent over to me. Right. One of the things I had no idea through all the history we have is that your family's from South Carolina. Mm -hmm. You know, because my mother was born and raised in Walterboro, South Carolina. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And so when I saw, <laughs> when I saw, I said, "Wait a minute, Mel and I had never talked See, about we that." We never before. knew. Yeah, never knew. You, about you that. know, but but it's but it's interesting because I think that some of the history that we've experienced, that we understand about seeing people struggling in a struggling time. Absolutely. You and I are both relatively the same age. And so our parents went through a time when there was a civil rights struggle. Absolutely. And so learning those stories about the challenges and the things that they had to fight to overcome, I think is part of the thing that internally, you know, made us understand that service and really right. being a part of uh, shaping our communities and making sure that we're helping people. Right. You know, all of those kinds of things are kind of ingrained in that storytelling. Absolutely. And so that's one of the things that, you know, I, I, I just recently, um, last summer, took my girls down to South Carolina to the old house that my mom. Did you really? And wow, that's great. brothers and sisters grew up that's, in. That's wonderful. And yeah. we looked at it and the girls said, 
well, Daddy, I don't understand. Um, where did everybody sleep? Because right. there are only yeah. three bedrooms. Right. And for them to just understand that it was a different it's way a of different life world. back then. I and, mean, and struggle really meant something back then that it doesn't really mean as it mean today. I mean, you know, because our parents went through sort of the challenges they went through, still got educated, still were able to provide for us. Yep. For now, our kids, we're able to, to now give them a you know, much better, uh, even better upbringing than we had. Even though we had a great one, that's we right. were able to give, we're now able to, to even give our, our kids uh, an even better one. And so that's the way it's supposed to be. That's, the, the, exactly. that's how the generations are supposed to go. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it is amazing how a lot of those civil rights roots uh, really go down the generations in terms of how they impact uh, for, you know, the kids later on who, who didn't experience them themselves That's the right. same way their parents did, yeah. but still are going to internalize those values, you know, of, you know, if, if someone's being denied rights over here, it matters to me, even though they're not my specific rights that are being denied. And that comes from that civil rights uh, era and, and sort of the struggle that then goes back to slavery, which, which was passed on uh, to our parents, you yeah. know, through, through their parents and their, their parents. So it, 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 is, it is amazing. And then, you know, so many folks have roots in the South. Okay. Um, even, even going generations back, uh, people can a lot of times draw uh, uh, some one or more <laughs> of their generation that, that, that have some roots in the South, and, and the South uh, is an integral part of this country's history, uh, good and bad. That's you right. Know, That's right. But 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 I, I talk a lot about the good in the South and how the, uh, the, the the traditions and the values really are important to kind of the American story, and and it's yeah. I think it, it's definitely important here in our region as well. Well, I feel bad because I think that we should have had some sweet tea instead of water, <laughs> but we'll That's save right. that for another That's time. That's okay. So. You had mentioned about future generations, and of course, you know, I, I love my kids. I know you do the same. And mm -hmm. one of the challenges that, of course, we face in uh, the job that we do is right. how you balance. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. between what it is that we're trying to do uh, and making sure that we're addressing all the needs of our community sure. and all the constituents that we represent, but also try and maintain that family, you know, work balance. Right. And, 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 and so I'm curious how you have been able to do that. I know my wife just the other day was giving me a hard time about <laughs> two events and I told her, sweetheart, that the election is almost uh, over right. and things will start to settle down. But being, you know, you being council chair, sure. myself being council president, you know, it's, it's crazy it's and tough. our schedules are insane. And really there is no ultimate answer to, yeah. to how to do it. It's all, it's always a work in progress. Yeah. And I remember uh, when I was running for office the, f the first time in 2010, uh, and I remember telling my wife, you know, hey, you know, after the election, uh, things would be a lot better. <laughs> and then the election came away. I remember and, saying that. And things weren't a lot better because <laughs> it really never ends. Um, yeah. You know, after the election, you're, you're still the council member for us. Uh, as being the leaders of, of our respective bodies, we have a lot more responsibility right. uh, than, than we had before. Uh, we have to work to kind of keep our colleagues together, focus our agenda, and that takes, you know, more than 24 hours in a day, but that's all we have to do that and balance family and get some sleep. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Absolutely. so there really is no answer. It's yeah. really you know, controlling your time, being blessed to have spouses like we both have who are understanding, because uh, they have their own careers, they have their, right. own, uh, their own responsibilities as well. And, and they're, in many ways, they don't put their dreams on hold for us, but they're charitable with uh, making sure that, that we, we are following the same dream in terms of public, public yep. service while they continue their, their path and what they're, they're trying right. to do. It. And we have to uh, ourselves be understanding of their dreams. What do they want to accomplish in That's life? Right. You know, they have their dreams too, our, our spouses, and we, right. we want to make sure uh, that we, we're, we are mindful of that. And, and I've, you know, I've tried to do that, and I know you've tried to do that, but yeah. it's a work in progress. Well, one of the things I like is that they, they certainly keep us grounded. Absolutely. Make Absolutely. sure that we don't get too big ahead. You, you know, it's, <laughs> it was so funny when I got elected as president, um, uh, some folks had made a comment uh, to my wife and said, oh, now you have to call him Mr. President. She said, <laughs> never have, never will. <laughs> so, yeah, that's so it's, um, <laughs> but, but I know that we're going to take a break real quick okay. and, and then we'll get back and talk about some of the initiatives that I know we're trying to work on together. Great. No Boundaries continues from the historic ballroom at the National Park Seminary in Forest Glen. To start things off, Montgomery County Council President Craig Rice steers the conversation with Prince George's County Council Chair Mel Franklin to their respective agendas. 
my agenda uh, this year had focused on small business. Sure. Understanding that small businesses mean so much uh, for communities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially a lot of our minority communities sure. that are trying to really develop and uh, bring themselves up, understanding that it's it's hard. You know, right. it really is hard to, to make a go of it. And, Absolutely. And, 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 and so I'm curious as, as to how your uh, agenda was shaped for this year and what some of the things that you focused on were? Well, one of the big themes for this year is bringing the world to Prince George's County and that's because we're really focusing on economic development. Right. I mean, there are a lot of issues, you know, you deal with, of course, uh, of course. <laughs> but, but we're focusing on economic development and jobs in particular uh, because, you know, our, our tax base in the county has challenges in terms of the commercial side. Right. We, we are, our tax base in Prince George's is heavily relying on residential property taxes. So if I live in a residence in Prince George's County, I feel, okay, I'm paying a lot in taxes, but because there's not this commercial base to kind of complement it the way we need it, um, that person who's paying those taxes might probably feels overtaxed, mm -hmm. but probably feels under, that they're like they're not giving, getting quite as many services as they want. So right. we've got to grow our commercial base, be smart about how we develop, look at all of our transit stations, for example, look at some of our other opportunities uh, to, to build industries, healthcare, we're building a new regional medical center, uh, uh, expanding Southern Maryland Hospital. Uh, Federal, the federal sector, which are going after the FBI procurement, right. as you know, uh, in particular the Greenbelt location, tourism, entertainment, MGM National Harbor. Uh, Can't uh, wait for that to get Yes, there. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, so we were focused on that picture, but then we are also focused on our small businesses. We have, uh, as you know, we have an economic development incentive fund in the county right. that we created a few years ago, a $50 million fund. We wanted to kind of create kind of a wow effect mm -hmm. towards economic development. We've taken 10% uh, of that fund and dedicated it just to uh, small business lending. Uh, so it, nice. it's uh, only locally owned and operated businesses are eligible. And what we've said is we want to use that to try to, to give our, our local companies, as you mentioned, many of them struggle in terms of payroll, uh, struggle to, to build capacity so they can compete for right. all these big projects we talk about. Right. Let's give them uh, some tools uh, to grow themselves so that they can take advantage of these opportunities. So you know, we it, put that in place, and that's a big, yeah. big thing this year. You know, the reason why that's so important, I think, is to build that self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. To Absolutely. Build, to build that self-worth, you know, because that's one of the things that we always see uh, and, and struggle with, you right. know, as we try and help. Uh, many people right. uh, who need assistance in right. our communities. Right. One of the things that we see is is that if we just give people a little bit of a helping hand, Absolutely. they want to do for themselves. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. And, and, and that's one of the things that I look back on my history of my parents uh, and my grandparents that were sharecroppers and right. they wanted to make sure that every single one of their kids went to college, Absolutely. every single one, all 13 brothers and sisters went to college, but in addition, they ended up starting businesses. You know, my uncle in Houston owns an air conditioning right. uh, company, also uh, has a number of uh, uh, houses that he owns and rents out. Um, another one of my uh, uncles was president of a bank you know, wow. my mom, you know, was a teacher yes, for a absolutely. number of years right, and right. then uh, ended up starting a nursing uh, agency right. for a little while. Right. I mean, so all of these kinds of things, I see how important it is absolutely. to give people that opportunity. And so that's absolutely. why for me, you know, small business is so important because I see how much of a difference it can make in people's lives and really sustain them. Right. And, and, and it's really what it's really the story of, of opportunity. There so we're go. talking about that's it. No one wants a handout. That's People right. want opportunity. That's they right. want, you know, give me the chance to be able to put my skills to work and go. make it for myself. That's right. You know, we can all make it in America if you know if you're willing to try, you should be able to make it in America. So that means the opportunity that's rooted in the American dream needs to be be there for everybody who's willing to seek it. And so exactly what you're talking about, I mean, that's building opportunity. That's right. what this is all about, what we do every single day. And so when we talk about world-class education, we talk about infrastructure, when we talk about small business support, these aren't just issues for checking a box or something. Right. These are people's lives. That's right. It's about giving people the opportunity to live out their dreams. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what we, we try to do every day. So you, you, you're absolutely right. And that's really um, uh, what I think we, 
we, we're actually making some really good strides in Maryland towards doing. Uh, yeah. we, we work together on raising the minimum wage. We yeah. want to make sure that people, if they work hard, uh, they, they, they should be rewarded for that work. Uh, you mentioned small business lending. We, we're, we're focusing a great deal on technology throughout the whole state, and in Montgomery yeah. County in particular, been very successful at That's leveraging right. research yeah. assets into private sector uh, growth. And we're, and we're in, in Prince George's turning our focus to that big time. We want to take advantage of things like, like the University of Maryland College Park yep. and, and, and assets uh, uh, that are throughout the county to try to leverage that same kind of thing. And right. so y you're absolutely right though. This is all, uh, this all feeds into to, to each other in terms of the issues oh, yeah. uh, for opportunity. But when you talk about feeding into and you talk about uh, collaboration mm -hmm. and, and cooperation, I mean, I, th I think that that's the reason why, and I have to thank you mm -hmm. for your, your willingness to go in with us on this Washington Metropolitan Regional Council Chair Absolutely, program. absolutely. Because I think that really, you know, you and I have experienced COG, you and I have experienced a lot of other things that do a great job, right? right? They do a great right. job of focusing on a number of very generic uh, issues sure. that affect all of us as right. a region. But we never really had a chance as the leaders of our respective jurisdictions to actually talk a little bit more about how we can collaborate together Absolutely. and really focus on stuff. And so that's why I just wanted to say thank you to you, you know, for being a part of this because bringing us all together, bringing right. Chair Mendelson from D.C., Absolutely. bringing you and uh, Chair Ball from Howard County Absolutely. and uh, 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 Chair Fazette and others uh, from Virginia. I mean, bringing all of us together Absolutely. to sit down at the table and say, you know what, how can we work together as a region? Absolutely. What we see other places doing. Right? And, 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 and thank you for your leadership in, 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 in stepping forward to pull uh -huh. us together. We have to have our legislative bodies talking to each other and putting policy together collectively That's because right. we're living in a, in a much more interconnected world even than when we grew up and we're not that old. That's right. <laughs> but the world is so much more connected now than it's ever been. Right. Issues are much more inner inter regional, uh, intra regional, inter regional and, yep. and it, you know uh, throughout the, the nation and, and the world. So we have to be smarter about how we do policy. That's we can't right. do policy like, like we did a generation ago when things are advancing at the pace they are in terms of technology yep. and the entire economy. So you're absolutely right. Legislature, local legislative bodies need to be talking to each other and more importantly, putting together policies collectively. COG does a great job. COG, I, I look at it as more of a facilitating role yes. uh, for, for jurisdictions, particularly on the executive side. I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, when, when it comes to things like emergency management, uh, preparedness, things uh, where we need coordination in terms of implementing things, I think COG is, is a great, uh, great tool. But we need to, I think, in terms of legislative policy, focus on how do we as legislators get together right. throughout the region and pursue policies that I think complement things that a COG is doing, complement things that other uh, organizations are doing, uh, but, but can really advance the ball forward. So thank you for pulling that together. I look forward to really us bringing forth some, some great ideas together. Transportation is an issue, transcends all of our jurisdictions. Yep. The environment transcends all of our jurisdictions. Even public safety and crime, uh, which, which, it, which goes throughout our jurisdictions. Those are all things where we need you know, policy making to yeah. happen uh, on the local level throughout the region together. Well, I think, you know, you bring up about future, and so I do want to, when we come back, mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about what the future holds. For this final segment of No Boundaries from the Ballroom at Forest Glen's National Park Seminary, Montgomery County Council President Craig Rice and Chair of the Prince George's County Council Mel Franklin look to the future, starting with education. And one of the things we're looking at is, you know, the future of education for our kids, really making right. sure that we can curb the achievement gap. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But also making sure that we're changing the way we do things. You know, we've oftentimes talked a lot about, you know, always being you know, having a college degree and then, you know, maybe a post-secondary, right, you know, all right. of that. But now it's, oh, you know, let's make sure that we allow our kids to do whatever it is that they want to do and be successful. I think that's the right turn for us. Yeah. All of us are realizing that with education, we have to really start being a lot more flexible um, and being, I think, a lot more we have to really be a lot more in tune with, with how the economy is changing. I think the economy in the past, uh, while it changed and went through its 
your manifestation. I don't believe it's cha it changed nearly as fast as it's changing today right. because technology is transforming things. So, whereas you could just simply count on a college degree a generation ago and you know you were good. Nowadays, it's not even, you could have a college degree post-secondary and then find yourself without a marketable skill because yeah. the economy is changing that way That's right. to where things uh, that you probably expected to be successful aren't really anymore. So, I, and, 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 and really the trades are still something that don't get as much attention as they need to for our kids, yep. um, whereas a kid who, who isn't in tune to going to college can still get a really great career in the trades. That's right. And, and in the skill, skill trades. And those are trades that are going to be vital as the economy keeps changing. So I think you're absolutely right. We have to continue to give our schools the tools that they need to change as well. Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, too often we get kind of stuck in what's been comfortable. Absolutely. In my experience, what people want, I think, is options. I think parents, That's it. you know, and I know you That's agree it. with that. Yeah, yeah. Parents, when they're looking at what they want for their kids, they want options. That's right. Some of them want the specialty program, the TAG, or, or a, a career academy, or IB, or AP. Some of them just want the comprehensive classes. Right. Some of them want a completely different, like French immersion, or Spanish immersion. But we, I think, as, as, as elected officials supporting our schools, need to make sure those menus of, the, that menu of options is robust enough to where our, our uh, constituents are gonna buy into the school system and really have faith that their, young, their, their kid can get a great education, yeah. uh, regardless of what they want to do. So now, how did you end up not getting uh, the education uh, yeah, bug? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as you know, and you know, your your, your mom was a teacher yep. for 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 an, an administrator, and my you know my mom taught for over forty years. My my dad started; he was a teacher, but he went, became principal, ultimately a school super uh, system superintendent. Right. Uh, then back to principal, then back to to lead a uh, system. Uh, now he's retired, but um, really. Back when my parents were coming up, there were very limit. There, there were very few occupations in South Carolina, if you were African American, uh, that you could do as a professional. And mm -hmm. being an educator was an option that a lot of people chose. Not not only because they, they believed in, and and were very passionate about educating young mm -hmm. people, but they wanted to be professional, wanted to have great careers. Right. And as African Americans in, in in the South at that time, there were there were very limited options. Oh, yeah. So they they chose that. For me. I think they encouraged me to look at all of the possibilities out there. there. And my brother, you know, became an attorney. So who right. doesn't want to be like their big brother, right? right? So that was one of the reasons why I led I into that. And, and okay. um, you know, that, that was kind of, you know, the rest is, is sort of history. How about you? How did well, you avoid well, it? Well, see, it's, it's, it's very interesting because um, my mother, coming from such a large family, mm -hmm made sure that she only had one child. Right. So, <laughs> so I'm actually the only child. And it's right. interesting when you look at the big families mm -hmm. and then the next generation ends up being a much smaller family. Right, right, Because how, right. how many, it's, it's just it's you just and me, your brother? Well, no, it's three of us. Oh, three. Me, my, that's my brother right, and sister. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's older brother So, I mean, sister. significant difference from 11 Absolutely. to three, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, so, so it's... And it's, my sister is more along my age. So, we both looked up to our big brother in terms of go. wanting to be like him. There you go. Yeah. So, so for me, it was, you know, looking at my mother and father mm -hmm. and you know my father had served in the Marine Corps right. so uh, I thought about going Navy and at the time Top Gun was big right right <laughs> exactly. so uh, my dad was in Marine Corps and so I said you know what and I was interested in uh, aerospace for a long time anyway so right. I decided to go aerospace engineering hmm. and Naval ROTC so mm -hmm. I was training to become a fighter pilot, and that's really what I wanted wow, to do. Great. Now, you know, unfortunately, and, and you know the story, I had some unfortunate family incidents right. that led me uh, in a different direction. Sure. But um, one of the things that's a core principle, and I think that this is important to understand, is that education is public service. Absolutely, absolutely. You know? And absolutely. so that's one of the things that I think came through mm -hmm. our parents. That's a good point, yeah. Right? Yeah, Was absolutely. that my father being in the military and my mother being a teacher, your parents being teachers, public service, serving the constituency, Absolutely. right? It's a great point. And, right. and, and so from that, I think that that's the core of what we drew from it right. and ends up why we are and, and why we feel so passionately about doing this, Absolutely. even though we both had successful careers that we could have taken. Right. You know, you being an attorney, sure. myself being in business with Marriott and with Abs Aramark. Absolutely. I mean, we could have gone those routes and been extremely successful as well, but we right. chose then I think at the core, when we really look back Where at it. Where the passion it, comes from. Exactly. Is it's rooted in education. It's a great point. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. So, so you, you know, we're continuing to talk about the future, and I know that the future looms bright. 
uh, for Prince George's. I mean, coming a lot of off big of, things on the horizon. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you what do you see that that means for people? Well, we're going to have some pretty um, pretty defining sort of projects that are that are going to happen in the county. MGM National Harbor, uh, which is a, a, a project that uh, was, was voted for uh, by the residents of the county as well as voted for in terms of the state. Right. Uh, then the state made a choice about location and whatnot and, and, and who the project would go to and that was MGM. MGM is going to be near a $1 billion facility. Uh, it's going to be tr it's going <laughs> to transform again the image of the county. Uh, we're really, as I mentioned, trying to bring the world to Prince George's County, right. there, there isn't anything more symbolic of that than MGM at National mm -hmm. Harbor. Uh, it'll be a gateway well, coming from Virginia. Well, that carousel wheel is pretty nice, though. <laughs> that is very nice, <laughs> and, and, and you got to try it. It's not. I got to come over yeah, there. Yeah, I'm going to have you down news, for, so. the, for the wheel. <laughs> it, it's it's and, and it's really not that. It's it, it's a great great amenity down there, oh, but yeah. it's not that dangerous at all. Right. You know, people are like, oh, I don't want to get on the wheel. It's oh, great. I'm bringing my kids. Yes. Oh, I know they'll love it's it. It's great for the whole family. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's it's it's. Uh, a very safe and, and, and fun time. You have great views of the District of Columbia and all the downtown monuments. And, and really, that's really what National Harbor brings. I mean, right. it's, it's proximity to the district. I mean, it's almost in the district. It's not yeah. quite, but yeah. it's got that proximity that is a big benefit for the county and a big benefit for that project. The MGM is going to be transformational yeah. uh, for the county's image. Uh, then, you know, we're also, as I mentioned, the FBI project in Greenbelt. Yeah. The economic development is something that's it's regional now. It's yeah. uh, uh, and you know when you know your neighbors are doing well it helps others in the region That's do right. well when it comes to economic development speaking of which i mean you know we've got white oak and mm -hmm. um, not far from prince george's right. and you, right. you know it's it's a beautiful thing because i think that overall we're seeing a lot of focus on really starting to understand how important it is for us to continue sure. uh, to push the envelope when it Absolutely. comes to economic development, really understanding that jobs matter. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You, you know, the people are really looking for uh, opportunities, not just through small businesses, but those small businesses can do business with, just like you said, with MDM that's coming it. in with that kind of money means so much and for that's a small big businesses. Push yeah, for us. Whether Absolutely. it's, you, you know, you, you could own a, uh, the HVAC company Absolutely. that does the service Absolutely. on them, and that's a huge contract. The I people mean, who deal with the lights and toilet paper. I mean, these are these might seem exactly. uh, like simple things, no. but for a facility that large, those are those are multi-million dollar uh, over, over some years of contracts. And that's so it. that's that's a, that's, a, that's a someone's livelihood. Man. That's a company's livelihood. It's been awesome, you know, talking to Same you here. about every single thing that uh, really uh, kind of brings us together. Sure. And really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm even more understanding of why it is that it's so important for us to continue right. to work together because we Absolutely. share so much in common. Absolutely. Not just us personally, but our two counties as well. Absolutely. I know the future looms bright for you. I look forward to seeing great things from you, Mel. Same uh, here. I want to appreciate you for coming out uh, to Montgomery County. I'm going to have to make sure I get out there. Uh, we're going to have you <laughs> We're going to have you over. We'll have you down on the Capitol Wheel. How That's about that? right. That's right. I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to that. Same well, thank here. you very much, Thanks, man. Buddy. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. All right? Thank you. Take care. Appreciate it, brother. Thank All you. Right.